A very, very, very big shout out. I know they're not even going to hear it, man, but anyway, it's always for Allah. A very big shout out to the homeless run. Wallahi, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them. They've worked effortlessly, effortlessly, effortlessly. Um, very, very big shout out. In fact, when you go outside, you'll notice they've got a little can. They're trying to raise some money for a brother in Lebanon. His name is Abdullah. I think he has to do some sort of treatment. So please, if you want to help those brothers out, they're not asking for anything. They're just putting the box there. The food is free. Everything is free. So if you want to help out, please help out. They've got a little box there. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward all the brothers in the homeless run. Wallahi Kamal and Bill and all the boys there. Wallahi, you guys are actually you know, very, very, very special brothers, man. Soldiers that are on the ground, you never hear their voice, but they work hard. The other thing is, is because I know I'm like, I may forget to mention at the end, you know. But sometimes people talk to me about change. Like, how do we change? What do we do? You know, this whole event, this whole event was put together and funded and organized by one person only. He was not from our masjid. Just he was frustrated with what's happening in the community. He gave me a call. He said to me, brother, if I slap this together, would you come? I said, yeah, I'll do it. One brother. It shows you, it shows you that when one person cares, look how much can happen. Imagine when 20 of us care, we actually come together. Allah, we can move mountains. So that brother knows who he is. I don't need to mention him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward him. Other thing I need to clear out. It's going to be a very sensitive topic. I'm sure you know. I'll try to keep my calm. Actually, I'm not. I'm lying. Allah, I'm going to... Astaghfirullah. Anyway. Um, so let's get things off the bat. Number one, I don't get paid to be here. Number two, if you think I came out of my way to come here and offend you, you're very wrong. Wallahi, I'm here, I'm sitting, I'm talking for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us to better ourselves and to improve. But we're speaking about a topic where every one of us is one way or another connected and related. Sometimes I make examples and brothers get upset. Yani many, many times I'll give a khutbah and the brother will come up to me after. Wallahi, I've never seen him before in my life. I don't know his name. I know nothing about him. Billy, brother, wallahi, that's a bad guy. I can't believe you spoke all about me in your khutbah. Talla fiha. The brother, wallahi, I don't know who you are. Guess what do you mean? I don't know who I am. You mentioned me word for word. So if you're wearing a bright league and I mention a bright league, it's not because, wallahi, I've seen you and I wanted to fresh you here. You know, if I mention Taru, you know, and, and it's a very difficult situation. Yani, how many of the boys have Taru's? So what does that mean? That I never talk about it because, wallah, you make a car. Yani, it's, it's a very difficult situation. So please, don't feel like I came here to offend or insult anyone. Wallahi, I haven't. Is that clear? And can, can we at least have that lunch? And I'm already seeing Gucci hats. So if I mention it, don't get upset, bro. Salaam ala Rasulillah. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the King, the Master, the Sustainer, the Creator of the seven heavens and the earth. And we send peace and blessings upon His beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My brothers, the event is titled, Which Side Are You On? Which side are you on, my brothers? Very, very, very important before we start, that tonight I don't want you to think about others. Today I don't want you to think about the boys in the area. Tonight I want you to think about yourself. Which side are you on? Which side are you on? Because today many of us think that being a gangster, and I've been told to not call them gangsters because when you call them gangsters, he gets a sense of a sense of equality because I'm a gangster. So tonight we're going to call them pranksters because that's what they are. That's what they are really and that's the truth. Because many of us, we tend to think that a prankster is a guy that sells drugs and has tattoos. Habibi, there are people that are 15, 60 years old and he prays in the masjid and he's a father and he's a bigger prankster than the boys you see outside on the street. A prankster is a way of life. It's a decision that you've made. Selling drugs and having tattoos, this is a small portion. But it's a mindset. And what path have you chosen? So the idea is, is which side are you on? Which side of the fence are you on, my brothers? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us on this earth for a very, very, very short time. This world, my brothers and sisters, is not for you and I. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it very clear that we created the human and the jinn and we've placed them on this earth for a simple task. Nothing more, nothing less. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says we created them for what? They are the doom, to worship me, to know me, to call others to me, to glorify me, to make me number one. Not the number one, the ultimate one. That's your purpose on this earth. 
That's your maqsar. The very reason that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you life. The very reason you're walking on this earth is this and only this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my brothers and sisters, and please understand, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not care. Allah doesn't care about your money. Allah doesn't care about your cars and your women and your houses. Allah doesn't care. When would we understand? Brother, you were born naked. You were born naked. Wallah, it's amazing. You walk outside on the street and again, it's not just the pranksters. Sometimes you see brothers that are even supposed to be religious. Brothers with beads and whatever you want. Egos, brother. Egos the size of mountains. Egos and arrogance. Habibi, Tashu Shaykh, Allah, brother. What, what is it that you're so proud of? What is it that you and I are so proud of? That the Prophet of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the greatest, imagine the greatest. Yeah, what was his attitude like? The Sahaba, they described him. They said he was more shy, he was more modest than a virgin behind her veil. He was more shy, he had hayat. In fact, shyness is a bad translation for hayat. Because shyness is, is sometimes a weakness. Hayat, he was modest. He was modest. Today, you and I tend to think that that's weakness. The brother doesn't walk. If you're there, you know, in my upbringing, the one that doesn't talk, miskin and a muslim, my bihki brother, the one that doesn't talk. That's how we program. That the one that's strong, the one that has the ability, is the one that talks, brother. The one that stands up and says it like it is. Today, even our women do this. Brother gives an opinion that the women are fat on Abu Jalal. Why? Because today, this is how we translate strength. But the guy's humble, he keeps himself, he doesn't say much. No one, why? No one even pays attention. So, so, so don't fall into the mistake and translate modesty to be weakness. For yes, the Prophet of Allah was more shy than a virgin behind the veil. But these same Prophet wasallam, the Sahaba, the Sahaba, those that were on the battlefield, they described him. They said, Wallahi, when he was on the battlefield, and the fighting would get so intense. The fighting was so intense that we couldn't fight anymore. What did they say? They used to say we used to run behind the back of Rasulullah just to take a moment, just to take a breather, just to have a break while he continued fighting. So don't get the two confused. But egos, egos, actually honestly, I mean, I should say, what is it that you're so proud of? Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he says, amazing. He says, it amazes me. How can the one that traveled through the passage of urine twice, when you left your father and you left your kid, you traveled through the passage of urine twice. He said, how can this person still have pride and arrogance in his heart? I should say, like, what is it you're so proud of? What? You were born naked. You were born naked. And you were die naked. And everything you achieve in between, all your houses and your cars and whatever it is that's making you look down upon others, all this stuff in between, where's it staying? Do you think we take it with you? Today, just today we were at a janaza. I'm sure most of you know about it. Just today we were at a janaza. How did you go down? How? How? When it was on the street, people used to pee and shake and shiver. And those that you will tell you, how about the lion, beautiful brother? Whatever it is, he's not my point. Today when we go with him, how did you go down? What did you take with him? Make it like the day he was born. You know the shroud that we propped him up with? You know the one that we wrapped him up with? Not even a brand name. Wallahi, I mean the same one said to me, he said to me, he used to go to a place, some Chinese guy used to get the cheapest white cloth, the cheapest material we can get. Why? It's food for worms. My brother's walking around with the egos, man. But who are you kidding? Who are you kidding? Honestly, who are you kidding? And you know what the truth is? Well, why are you only arrogant on the one that you know you can't do anything anyway? It's a scheme. But as soon as someone comes in that's 
bigger than him, richer than him, more capable than him, like a cat, like a rat. He knows his spine, he goes and he runs straight into it. You know, the light, there's always going to be someone bigger, there's always going to be someone stronger, there's always going to be someone with more money. So relax and follow your prophet. Which side are you on? Which side are we on, my brothers? On the day of judgment, don't think you know well, my, one of the names of the day of judgment is the day of regret. The name of the day of judgment is the day of regret. Because the truth is, many of us now we're living in Disneyland. All the boys, you know, we have this mindset. And you know what? I can do whatever I want. Let me run away. Let me do this, that, and the other. And then at the end, I'll do hands, I'll patch it up, I'll repent, and then everything is going to be alright. But where did you get this from? Where did you get this from? Brothers, now when they die, everyone asks, Brother, did he make Shahada before he died? One guy tells me, Yet, as long as we see his finger move. But what does that mean? The guy lived on earth like a tyrant, what? Because he made sure that before he died, that means he's gonna be alright. Who are we kidding? The brothers go away on holidays, yeah, with the boys. He's doing halal, racking up, drugs, women, girls. The guy drowned. Then he drowned in his halal, brothers. Oh, the yeah, Alhamdulillah, we heard that the one that drowned, you know, that the guy that drowns, it's a sign of what? That he died a shaheed. Brother, what planet are you on? Well, my brother, we heard he died on a Friday. What does that mean? Do you know that brother died, you know, the guy that died on the well park, and there was that video? That video, Wallahi, Ya Allah, I made my blood boil, bro. There was a video that was recorded. The video wasn't even complete. The brother that actually recorded it, when he recorded it, he called me. So, this is what I for the sake of that brother, so I can clarify things for you. Yeah? When the brother was recording, he called me, he said to me, Brother, I'm telling the guy to make sure he's not making it. Now, so, what does that mean? Do you think that's a bad sign? I said to the brother, Is he responding? He said, Yeah, he's looking me in the eyes. I said, So, when you're talking, does he know what he's saying? He says, Yeah, he knows. I said, Is there? He said, He's squeezing on my legs. I said, Then that's it. Then he knows what you're saying. And people are talking about brother, he lied and he didn't say shahada. I asked him by Allah, from the time you've seen that video till now, how many times have you made shahada? The brother went straight into a, 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 a truck at 150 k's, the guy's ripped up and, yeah, of course, it's not going to make sure everyone thinks that, you know what, when I die, it's going to be calmly connected. Well, why, my brother's leave in Disneyland. But we hang on to these things, we cling on to it. Almost as if, you know, you know what, did the brother make shahada? Yeah, he made shahada. Well, really, be honest, deep down in your hearts, how do you feel? Half is gonna be alright. Really, my brother, really, is he really gonna be alright? Facts, facts, don't get upset with me. Facts. The day of resurrection is a day that's 50,000 years long. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he describes that day, facts, Quran. He says on that day, the pregnant woman will lose her load. He says a child on that day, a child, that this child is free, he's bali, he's never done any sins, he's got nothing to worry about, the kid's got nothing to worry about. Fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says on that day, his hair's going to go gray. Fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, your mother is going to raise you. Your mother will run away from you. Your father will run away from you. Your mother, your wife, your children, your husband. Every single person that you know will run away from you. Fact. Prophets, fact. Prophets are going to be scared on that day. Prophets are going to be scared. The Prophet of Allah, when he says to Aisha, he says on that day you'll be naked. Barefooted, uncircumcised, Ya Aisha. I remember once I mentioned this hadith in the gathering in the masjid. So one of the boys, he came to me after, he said to me, Brother, how can you mention that hadith? You know, I've got a 12-year-old daughter here, you know, that maybe it was a bit inappropriate. So I actually felt bad. Then when I was driving back, I thought, hang on, if the Prophet of Allah, who was the king and the master of Haya and shyness and, 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 you know, and, and, you know, and the best of character, he had no problems conveying this to his wife. Why should I be embarrassed?
first to convey it. He said in his wife, Aisha, naked, barefooted, uncircumcised. I ask you by Allah, isn't it enough for me to tell you they gotta be naked? Don't you get the picture? Halas are naked. We understand naked, finished, done. No, naked, barefooted, and uncircumcised. Why uncircumcised? Why? Because he's letting you know, even that little piece of foreskin that left you when you were a baby, bro, when you were pure, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even that piece of foreskin, Allah is going to bring it back, restore it. Why? Because not an inch, not a single inch of you will escape Allah on that day. The brother's comfortable here, alhamdulillah, he moved his finger, man. Alhamdulillah, he didn't pray, but Allah, he had the best heart. Everyone's sure, brother, it's going to be alright. Yeah, the brother didn't pray. Yeah, the brother didn't pray. My brothers and sisters, let me clarify something, because we have been polluted. Let me tell you something, just for the sake of understanding, because there's many people who tell me, look, you know, maybe I didn't pray, I think. But you know what I do in secret. Yeah, you know, maybe I don't pray for so long, I have a big heart. You know, well, you know, I give a lot of money in charity. My brothers and sisters, let me tell you something and understand this as fact. As far as sin is concerned, and please understand this message very, very clearly. Of course, it's all sin, it's all haram, none of it is good and accepted. But for the sake of understanding, because many of us, well, we see a brother that's selling drugs, we see a brother that may be murdered, another brother, we say, Fah, look at these people, look how rubbish they are. Habib, let me tell you something in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As far as sin is concerned, yeah? The one that sells drugs, good or bad? Just very quickly, good or bad? Bad. Bad. How about the murderer? Bad. How about the one who commits adultery, zina? Bad. What about the one who rapes a child? Bad. What about the one who drinks alcohol? What about the one who does the biggest of the command? Good or bad? This person, one person that commits all of these sins, he commits all of these sins on a daily basis, but he prays is better in the eyes of Allah than the one that doesn't commit any of these sins, but doesn't pray. So you and your brother, yeah, I'm a good guy. I really can't pack that up because it's not going to work on the day of judgment. Any person that misses one salah, one, one, not two, one salah, you miss one salah for no reason. You're worse than a murderer, you're worse than a rapist, you're worse than a terrorist, you're worse than a pedophile in the eyes of Allah. But it's alright, because he's seen the loot that he died on Friday, man. Which side are you on, my brothers? Prophets will be scared on that day. Prophets and Biyat, they're going to be scared and petrified. And you and I. It's alright, actually, relax, man. What's wrong with this guy, brother? Why is he losing his mind for? My brothers, who are we kidding? What side of the fence are you on? <laughs> Fact that day, the sun will be a mile above your head. One mile above your head. One mile. The Prophet of Allah, he says, every person will be sweating, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Every person will be sweating, each person according to his sins. Some of you, you sweat to your ankles, some to your knees, some to your waist. He says, some of you will be drowning in your own sin. Fuck Quran. He says, on that day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, on that day, you see people running around. Oh, yeah, you're running around like he's intoxicated. Allah says, but they're not intoxicated. Allah says the severity of that day is so severe, people have, people have been driven to madness. And you and I, where, where are we? Which side are you on? Look at the way we live our lives. If he's not against on the street, he works 24 hours a day. If he doesn't work 24 hours a day, he's a bum 24 hours of the day. Nothing to do. I visited the house not that long ago, one way they smoked pot from Muslim to Fajr. And you know how many of these houses exist. Brothers that are married with children, married with children, he smokes pot from Muslim to Fajr. Which one are you on? The Prophet of Allah on that day. He says there are seven that will be under the shade of Allah on a day when there is no shade except His shade. 
only servant, no be under the shadow of Allah under his arsh. Which side will you be on on that day, my brother? Which side? <clears throat> you know, my brothers, let me tell you something. You choose the life of the prophets, you will have the ending of the prophets. But if you choose the life of Pharaoh, you're going to have the ending of Pharaoh. There's no running away from this fact. You choose the life of Pharaoh, Allah is going to give you the ending of Pharaoh. And how many times have you seen that, man? How many times have you seen Allah? Why, my brothers, how many more times are we going to see killings and murders and drop? Well, why this community is drowning? The community is drowning. Well, why is it drowning? And we're in a bubble. We're in a bubble. Asking, what are you doing with your life? What are you doing with your time? What do you want to be like? Do you want to be like the prophets and the Sahaba? Or do you want to be like, why have we chosen the life of princes and thugs? Why have we chosen this life over the life of Rasulullah wasallam? Please tell me, what is it? Do you think there's happiness in that? Do you honestly think there's happiness? I'm going to share with you facts. These are the things you don't hear about. But the brothers here, especially those brothers that used to live that life and have genuinely changed and repented. You know, these people, they actually need to start speaking up a lot more. Why? Because when someone like me speaks, people think I'm twisting the truth. Well, why I tell you exactly what it is? You know, my brothers, these people, you think they're happy, eh? Hey? When you and I see pranksters outside in the street, we think they're happy, don't we? Why? Because he's driving a hectic car, or he walks into a particular area, or into a particular place, everyone gives him the respect that, you know. Well, so we think these people are happy. But truth, fact, well, what in fact? Look, you cannot run away from formulas that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in fact, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً بَغْتَرًا Any person, خلاص بقى, prank star, not a prank star, he's just busy. Any person, any individual that stays away from the remembrance of Allah, stays away from the deen of Allah, stays away from the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, any person, ask yourself, am I miserable? Yes. Why? This is the formula. Any person that stays away from the deen of Allah, the promise of Allah, فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَمْتًا For him is a miserable, wretched life. And some of these people, just to show you how powerful Allah is, some of these people, Allah will give them women, and Allah will give them cars, and Allah will give them houses, everything that you and I were dying for. And they still miserable. Why? Because Allah is showing you. These people that you and I will walk outside on the street, we'll go, wow, did you see? Did you hear? Did you? Have you become and see their lives and see how miserable they are? Have you noticed that there's always bags under their eyes? I went and visited someone in, and I'll talk about Habas later, so relax. I went and visited someone in Habas. Huh? Habas, brother. Look, well, look how we glamorize them. When was Habas ever an honorable thing? When? When? There's a difference between the guy who's been in prison because of that in that day for Allah. This guy is shut off. That's Habas. They have to take our hats off with honor. Why? He's, he was in prison for standing for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ahlul Sallam. But the guy who's ripping off the pizza man, and that's a shaykh Allah brother. So I went to go visit someone that's in Hamas. Well, why? He's a lifer. What's a lifer? He knows what a lifer is. Huh? Okay, he's in there for life, but that? Hold by tea drops and teas and things, but what's, what's going on? Movies, movies, movies! Well, why? You know, so I went to go visit him, we're, we're sitting down. Well, why? For one hour, one hour in the visit. I haven't seen this guy in years. One hour in the visit, the whole visit. Yeah, 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 alhamdulillah, you know? Yeah, 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 alhamdulillah. Brother, relax, man. Paranoid! Why? Because if the wrong person walks through those doors, it's all on, man. You think, brother, I haven't seen me in five years, man. You can't even sit down for me for one hour. Just look me in the eye, brother. Let's just have a decent conversation. That's the life that they live. 
These people that you don't like that we glamorize, what well, why? To go to sleep is on Sammy's. To go to sleep is on Sammy's. Then to stay up during the day, he's either on coke or he's on ice. But because you see him for that 10, 15 minutes when he walked in with his nice hat and his nice watch and his hectic car, what do you want to think? Wow, that's the life, man. The promise of Allah. You think these people are happy? You see them, they hang out with their boys, you know? Groups, now groups. They create games and taboos and representing Rabbah. And you and I just have to think, what? Well, I want to be a part of that. We left the Ummah of Rasulullah We left the Brotherhood of Islam for that. Why? Because if, because on the outside brother, we have four white cars. We're all the way, but I've walked off, walked off, my mouth, shoe, yeah? Apparently it's blood, you blood out, but I'm like this. How many of these groups ever sustained and kept them? How many? Every one of them failed. They were best friends in the beginning, at the end, what? What happened, brother? Speak the truth. They killed each other. If they didn't kill each other, they started running out on one another. That's their life. That's their life. And we love it. Wallahi, we love it. You know who loves it the most? We, the religious brothers, Wallahi, we love their life. Tell you what he said. Wallahi, not even myself. We all complain. When a guy comes into the masjid, he's a nice guy, he's miskin, he's trying to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's a good kid. But because he sits in the corner, he'll come to the masjid for one year. No one even knows his name. But when a drug dealer walks into the masjid, one well, morning the sheriff comes from here all the way left. So I can brother, ain't going through all the police, me, bro. Isn't that how we treat him? Be honest. But how does that muskeen that's been sitting in the masjid for one year, how does he feel, man? How does he feel? We love their life, bro. We love, we love talking about their life. Nah, nah. In certain circles, stuff for love, brother. It's got to change, man. It's got to change. But when it's around the right people, fine. You see what car is driving? Yeah, man. What did you do? Oh, I heard this one. And we love it, bro. We each, we each. Go to their houses, go to their funerals. And you see people. You know this person had nothing to do with the Bible at that point. Did he say, what are you doing here? No, what are you doing here? I'm here for the sake of Allah. You little skinners, how are you? Not all, of course, just so we can do it hard, you know? Not all, but what are you doing here? You can see it all over their faces, bro. What are you doing here? You know, deep down, it's an opportunity to get closer to their family, isn't it? We love their life. You think they're happy? You think they're mates? You think these people are, 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 are really, really true friends? Well, boy, they love each other so long as you're not doing better than him. They love you and they show you love and they show you muhabba so long as you're under him. But as soon as you're up and coming, as soon as now you start to make waves, you see ripples, divisions, hatred. And there's this culture, you know, brother, now, wallah, he don't understand where I'm that, brother, wallah, I'll take a bullet for him, wallah, wallah, brother, sit down, man. I'll take a bullet for him. Who are you kidding, brother, who? Who are you kidding? These young kids, you know, they look up to these people, they aspire, have you what do you look up to, filth? Filth, well, why, that's what it is. But I went like that, you know, Allah, I'll take a pull off my Habibi, trust me, trust me, trust me. When this comes out, Habibi, everybody runs, everyone runs. But to the is my brother, he's my colleague. What's wrong with you, bro? What's wrong with you? Well, why, there's only one person in the whole world. There's only one person in the whole world that will happily throw their life in front of yours to protect you. Only one! You know who it is? It's the person you sold for your friends, Habibi. She's called your mom. It's my old lady. Lena, man, she's 
She doesn't know the girl. She doesn't know the girl. Or well, maybe she knows the girl better than you know the girl. She knows what's good for you better than you know what's good for you. We sold our family. We sold our mothers and our fathers. We've sold the masjid. We've sold the people that genuinely fear Allah and good company. For what? What did we give it up for? For rubbish and filth. And we all think, what? These people will trust me, brother. These people, we care for one another. Have you ever seen when these people go to Habas? Jail? For those of you who are looking at me thinking, what's Habas? Habas is jail. And like everything in that life, we glamorize it. We give it mad names. Well, I remember the first time I seen that. There was a brother, he was saying the story. And he wanted to, so basically he wanted to say that the devil came out. But in that circle, like, you have to live, like, you have to talk in a particular way. Yeah, you know, when it comes to Allah, you're not going to believe it, but the was the guy walked in, and then, and then that came out. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm thinking, he mentioned every other word, yeah, why wouldn't you say come? But I keep an eye on And we love it. But if you know what he's saying, you know what he's saying, he's saying this one. <laughs> Just, well, what? Movies, movies, move. I'm telling you, it's all hell. And then, you know what I mean? Oh, my frustration. Anyway, so we want these, these friends, these people that we sold our law for, these people that we sold our mothers and our fathers for. Come and see, I mean, come and see how loyal your friends are when you go to Abbas. Come, come and see. Come and see. You know, I share this with the boys all the time. Remember your first prison visit? I remember I was very, very young. I was never really, uh, you know, at that age, never sort of really mixed in that, you know. I remember the first time I went to Habas to visit. Wallahi, I felt like I was calling one brother, man. <laughs> but I'm the biggest shafta in the world. When I got out of the car, when I got out of the car, when I got out of the car, it's an attitude, it's an attitude, you know, it's a mindset. I remember the first, oh, we were so excited. And, you know, finger print, my finger. Well, you were happy to do the whole thing. Now when someone calls me for a prison visit, what? Well, why do you run for your life? Why? Because that's the trick, Habib, you know what it is. When you go to prison, my brother, those young and upcoming, those that feel that, you know, going to the prison is like, Earning your colors. Go, go, go and see what's happening in prisons. Those brothers that did real time, real 10 years and 12 years, and people that have genuinely repented, guys that are completely off the radar, guys that you don't even remember anymore. Why? Because they used to be real. They used to genuinely do haram and genuinely change their pulled up, and now he doesn't want to know the world and he doesn't want the world to know him. These people, when I sit with them, well, why they open up and they tell you about how us? These people that you and I, we run and we glamorize on the street and we think, yeah, this guy's gorgeous and this... Wallahi, they're the biggest girls inside. Wallahi, they're the biggest girls. Wallahi, Wallahi, they're on drugs day and night to forget their worries. Wallahi, some of them, they told me, Uqsubala, I heard them with my own ears, crying at night. Why? Habib, when you're doing 10 years of your life, for what? 10 years of your life. And we love it. Your friends, well, why are your friends after one year? The boys for the first year, they're happy to put, you, they're happy to put money into your buyout so you can buy your tuna and your bread and your rice. They're happy. But after a year and two years and three years and he's still got seven years left. Who's left, Habibi? Who? You know who's left? <coughs> the Hajj and the Hajj. Your old man and your old woman. Those who you don't have time for anymore. <coughs> well, I have seen them with my own. Never have I been to a prison visit. Except you see it. You see it. Old lady, she's 60 years old. She's been driving for two hours. They park their car, they're exhausted. You see it all over their face. She gets out of the car and she knows now mental preparation. They're going to frisk her, they're going to search her, they're going to. She has to touch this and, and stand here and move the glass door and move this. And she does it every single week. Never misses a week. Every single week. 
She saves money from her pension money, from the welfare check. She saves it so that she can put it in the account for her son because he needs to eat, man. If I look after my son, who's going to look after him? And Wallahi, my brothers, Wallahi, this is personal experiences. The brother's been doing for almost 10 years. 10 years, the Nishak. Because that's what happens when you live this life, you become a Nishak. Your mentality, you become a Nishak. Wallahi, that's what you become. Don't get offended. Please don't get upset from fact. If you choose that life, and you want to live that life, and you know that there is Quran and there is Sunnah, but she still insists on this. Wallahi, you become a Nishak, even if you don't realize it. Brother's been doing 10 years. His mother never left him, never failed him a single weekend. Then brother, as soon as you get out, what do you want to do, man? What do you think he wants to do? Go home and kiss his mom's sleeve and tell her, thank you for the years I've wasted of your life. Thanks, mom. At your age, I'm supposed to be looking after you. You are the one that will put money in my account. After 10 years, you know what he wants to do on the first night? If he's not going to a brothel, where's he going? And I gotta see the boys, man. See the boys. And that's the life. That's the life. That's the life that we choose. And it gets worse. What do you think these people do? What? Come and see the money that they make, the money that you and I, our eyes, it glitters. And, and there's no hypocrisy here, you know what I mean? My weakness is cars. When I see cars, well, why you can put the biggest Khazira woman on the face of the planet? You put the right car in front of me, I want to know about it. For all I was saying, I have an addiction for cars, you know? So for me, it's cars. But these things that they have, these nice watches, and these nice brand names, and how do you think these people make this money? How? How? Today, you know, the guy that works hard, the guy that wakes up in the morning, he has a trade, maybe he has a shop, maybe you know, he's working in an office somewhere. How is this person viewed in our community? He's a matta, man. But this life, this life is horrible. Fuck, did you see the car he drives? How do you think he made that money? How? How, how do you think he made that money? Either he's pimping women, selling women, and sometimes we are in the Muslim women. He's selling women. If he's not selling women, what's he doing? Selling drugs. He's selling a product. He knows it's killing our community. You know why my brothers, we live in bubbles. Why are we live in bubbles? Go and see how many Muslims are on drugs. Go. Go and see. But you know what? We don't want to know. We don't want to know and we don't care. Because at the end of the day, as long as I'm alright, my wife is okay, my kids are pretty, and I can go fishing at the end of the week. I mean, what do you want from me now? What do you want to do now? What do you want to do? You don't see how many of our women, you don't see how many of our brothers are addicted to drugs. Who's supplying them? The fuck? Muslims are supplying them. By the way, we're going to do, man, if the guy's a junkie, you know, if he doesn't bite off me, but he's just going to bite off someone else. That's how they make their money. Selling rubbish, intoxicating their people, crippling the Ummah, that's how he makes his money. And you and I, we think, what? Yeah, man. Now, some of these guys, well, why have that brothers to me? But, uh, I don't know, man, but you know some of these guys, but they're on 10, 15 grand a week, brother. Some of these guys are on 30k a week, brother. So you sell your deal for 30 grand a week? You sell online his profit for 30 grand a week? But he's got 30. You know, you know how many of these people have got so much money, but what can they do with it? Who knows? I know guys have got so much money. But if you gave every single person in this room, if you gave every person in this room five grand, he'll still have enough money to spend for his whole life. Because we've got a it's dead money, man, I can't do anything with it. If I buy a car, the police jump on me. If I buy a house, they're gonna jump on me. But Allah shows you. Allah shows you that money's not happiness. Sometimes they have money. I can't do anything. 
this water. Tell us anything with it. But we love it, bro. We love that life that we have. But because we left the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look at what's happening. Listen to this. Because now how does, if anyone wants to make money, right? Let's say you don't care about halal and haram, and you want to make money. Where does your mind automatically go? True? The visa, the good life now is not being anymore, is it? Who wants to wake up at 7 o'clock in the morning, brother? Why? Why? Or how often does he make his money? Yeah, yeah, we don't go out tonight and relax. How often does he make his money? You know what's worse? You know what the worst thing for me is? You know these pranksters? You know what the worst thing is? The filthiest thing is when he tries to bring deen into his haram and justify what he does to the deen. Wallahi, I've heard it with my own ears. Brothers that have a run. Brothers that have a drug run. Because brother, that's my result, man, it's from Allah. <laughs> Allah, I'm not joking. Who knows people that speak like this? Be, be honest here, just so the boys don't, don't think I'm lying. Please raise your hand. If you know boys that say that he's drug running, is it also from Allah, my father? So I'm not lying. How else does he make his money? You know how else he makes his money? This is the same guy when he walks into the masjid, we all love him, man. Brother, yeah, work on him, man. Because if you win him over, man, I'll win all of them over, inshallah. Brother's been in the masjid for five years, he's still doing drugs, he still does what he does, and no one ever talks to him. How else do these people make their money? You know what they do? To show you, we think they're men. These people are cowards, or why these people, they're filthy. Cowards, cowards, cowards. You know what they do? Some guy, he's a skin, he's a simple man. Uh, he opens a little shop, maybe he has a little shop, maybe he has a little grocery shop, maybe whatever, he opens up a little shop, he's trying to make some halal money, he's trying to keep his family off the street, he's trying to not extend his hand out to the government and earn welfare. So he works 12, you know, 12, 12 hour days, sometimes 12, you know, sometimes 7 days a week. Yeah, he opens a little business, he's trying to make ends meet, trying to make ends meet. Simple man, he's doing something halal. You know what these so-called hectic gangsters do? They come to this skin and they hit him up for what? Protection. The guy's struggling to make 1500 bucks, maybe sometimes $2,000 a week. Struggling, works 12 hour days, 7 days a week. And mashallah, here come our beautiful boys to hit, to hit up the brother for what? Protection money. Uh, sorry, to protect me from what? Take you from me. <laughs> so you want me to pay you money? So you want me to pay you money? To protect myself from you? Yeah. But included in the package. <laughs> well, why do you think it's funny? You have no idea how many people they live their lives like this petrified money. That where's it gonna go? But don't worry, when we're going to throw into the package, if someone else like me comes along, I'll deal with him for you. You think, wow. And some of us now, because, because of political events, now we've changed our approach to We've tweaked that up a bit. What do we do now? Yeah, 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 well, I'm going to go all out for my management. Right? What do we do? We find, we find the Shia in our community, or the Alimi guy in our community, you know the Alimi guy that lives in the Sunni community, you know the guy that has a shop, and we put it on him. And we justify that it's for the sake of Allah, and we don't call his money protection money, what do we call his money? Jizya. Yeah, 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 yeah. You think it's funny, this is what's happening. Jizya, you have a shop, Jizya. Jizya. Why? Because it's a Shia? Why? Why? Because it's a Alawi? Yeah, brother, they should. Look, you go, well, why? This, look, this is how Allah destroys people. This is how. Brother, he's a Shui, brother, he's a Shui. But he's a Shui. Living in a Sunni community, what do you think you should be doing? We should be opening our arms and inviting these people in. If these people are lost and these people are confused, if we don't open our arms, then where are they going to go? You don't want to fight from a Shia because
because you think you know. Fine, don't buy from him. You don't have to buy. You can boycott the brother. That's fine. No problem. But to put it on him and then say it's for him. Wallah, I did. Wallah, I did. I gave a whole persona, and after the talk, I had a shiri brother come to me. Shiri. No, Wallah, I never knew it was a shiri. The guy standing there in Abaya and the full beard, and I'm like, he baffled me. He goes, brother, I'm a shiri. Oh, okay, all right, help. He goes, brother, you know, I've been living in the area, in one particular area. He goes, brother, you know, I've been here for 20 years of my life. I said, yeah, all right. He goes, man, and ever since whatever happened in the little area, he goes, man, our shop gets fire bombed on a regular basis. Yeah, all right. I guess he, and well, to be honest with you, yeah, I'm starting to think about selling our house and selling and going to where our people are in the area. What the hell? But this guy's on our doorstep. Now we're supposed to be there. We're supposed to be inviting these people and calling them to hack and calling them. Now what are we doing? We're putting a lot of and what and But that's the life of a pain star. That's the life that we want. Wallahi, I can talk all night, but I don't want to, you know, I, I, I... And we love this life so much, that even now, my gosh, the sisters, even the sisters can't escape the way. Even the sisters now, not all of them, because we have to be fair. Believe it or not, there's still sisters that genuinely fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And sisters that still want simple lives. There are still these women. But even the sisters now, what do they want, who knows? I want an ex bad boy, man. <laughs> look, look, look how poisonous. How poisonous. All the beautiful women want the ex bad boys. So this guy who's genuine, good kid, you know, he feels Allah is not very loud. He goes to school, he's an educated man, he's trying to make a living, very simple life. Instead of giving our best women to him, who does he take? He takes the girl that nobody else wants. Look how old oh, my soul. So the sister wants what? Alhamdulillah, he's repentant. <laughs> <laughs> and just to be fair, because I've made this mistake, those that have genuinely repented, who are we? If Allah subhanahu wa says, I forgive all sins. But I feel from the sister they love it. They love a brother who staggered, just happens to go past his sleeve. Why? And you can still see it, yeah? They love it. And yes, sister, while you might enjoy your Burberry bags, and you might enjoy your very, very nice car, and while you might enjoy the holidays here and there. But you don't know the other side of that coin, man. You don't know the sleepless nights. You don't know that when your kids come to you and tell you, where's, where's daddy, man? You don't know when your husband gets marked, he gets killed for something that you didn't know about. And then you've got to raise these kids on your own for the rest of your life. Why? Because you wanted the bad boy, man. You don't know. Allah, my brother's life was not meant to be easy. Understand this. Life wasn't meant to be easy. If life was going to be easy, then surely the Prophet of Allah would have had an easy and cruising trip. But he didn't have it easy, man. Sisters always told me, you know, I've heard this so many times. Brother, I wish, I wish I was married to the Prophet of Allah. Have you heard this? I wish, I wish I was married to one of the companions. I tell a sister, really, do you know what it would, do you know what it would have been like to be married to the Prophet of Allah? Your husband here, because he doesn't take you to restaurants, you complain. Your husband, because he doesn't take you to restaurants, you complain and you whinge and you whine. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha in the authentic hadith, she's speaking to her nephew Urwa. <coughs> listen to the words. Brothers and sisters, listen. She says, Wallahi ya Urwa, she's speaking to her nephew Urwa. She says, Wallahi, we used to see the full moon, then the full moon, 
Then the full moon. Two complete months. Two complete months would go past and not a single flame. Yet had no cooking and no boiling of any sort. She said not a single flame would be lit in any of the nine houses of Rasulullah So Harwa says, he says, oh my auntie, how did you people live? She said, what? Oh. She said, Al-Aswadan, the two black things, al tabru wal ma the dates and water, for two consecutive months. <coughs> Which side of the fence are we on, my brothers? Wahi, let me bring this to a close. Why, my brothers, this life have we been shown again and again. Look throughout history, look at the Sunnah, look through Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed us again and again. All those that follow the footsteps of Pharaoh, how did Allah deal with them? Muslim and non-Muslim alike. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deals with them. Which life do you want? Which side do you want? Are you on that side or are you on the side of Deen? Which one? But so how do we change? Allah, my brothers, I can give you a million ideas. The truth is, if you're not ready to help yourself, this whole thing, if they came together to help you, they can't help you. Number one, you need to want it yourself. You need to want to change. You need to want to change. And today, my brothers, let me tell every single person, just a couple of minutes, inshallah, just a couple of minutes, and then we're ending. So everyone just relax, just a couple of minutes. My brothers, let me tell you the truth. These are my thoughts over the last, maybe the last year. This community is drowning far more than you and I will ever imagine and comprehend and understand. The truth is, every one of us says what? The Mashaykh need to do more. How many times have we heard this yet? Who thinks that the Mashaykh are not doing enough? Just be real, man. Just put your hand up. Really? Don't be afraid. Put your hand up. I love how now everyone here now is acting humble, yeah? Who thinks the Mashaykh are not doing enough? Brother, put your hand up, be real. Yeah. Well, my brothers, let me tell you the truth. If every chef in Australia got together and worked for 24 hours for the next 20 years, they're not going to be able to help the condition that we need. This Ummah will not rise, this Ummah will not change until every single one of us gets off his backside and starts working. Understand, we are drowning. And we need help. Allah, we need help. You are lost. Women are lost. We are lost. We need help. And we need to work together. And stop thinking, brother, what can I do? You can do a lot. Everyone wants change, but no one's ready to pay the price. We give a lot scraps. We give a lot scraps. When we give charity, how much do you give? You give the money that you don't need. When we give clothes, you know, when they collect clothes for Syria and Sham, and then, what clothes do we give? Be honest, what clothes do we give? The clothes you don't need anymore. Scraps, I don't need them, I don't give them away. This, I need them We give a lot scraps, and in return, what do we want? For Allah Ta'ala, inshaAllah, man. Brother, come to the masjid. Join, join a Quran class. Stop making some change. Oh, Allah, I'm very busy at work, man. Then we're drowning, we're drowning. And I'm telling you, all we need is people to care. Well, why, if all you did was genuinely start caring, you'll see change. But what do you do? What do you do that's good? Use that and help the woman. Brother tells me, Wallahi, brother tells me, listen, man, Anna, I love my fishing. Fine. Fine, Wallahi, you know what? I'm gonna come with everyone today. Fine, you love fishing? Wallah, I love fishing. I can get fishing from my share to budget. I say, fine. Since you love your fishing, and you go every single night, and there's nothing on the face of the planet that I can do to change your mind, that's Wallahi, fine. But I tell you, brother, listen. If you're gonna get fishing, one of them is, why not go to the masjid, find one of the many kids that's lost, has no big brother, his father, why not take one of these kids and make him your power, make him your buddy, take him with you, man. Imagine every person did this. Whatever it is, that you, take someone with you. Take one of these kids, they take him with you, take him to 
عشاء بين تايجن في شيء شيء لا يمكن يهفن يبدو حلال تيز أنت ما رحت الشري and while you're doing whatever you do you put your word and your hook and your prose or whatever film you're doing don't win تايجن سبحان الله he said so it's the creation of Allah and now this is gonna give you do what you're doing and do but no one cares everyone's busy Wake up, my brothers, wake up. Today you might think, you know what, I'm busy. Well, why is going to come a day? Well, why is going to come a day? Either your son's going to need it, your nephew's going to need it, one of your cousins is going to need it, or your brother's going to need it. Try to learn how to do it. And my last thing, I've spoken much, my last thing, is my brother, I don't care what you do. I do, but, you know, as figure of speech. Do whatever you want. Just don't leave your salah. Can you do that? Just don't leave your salah. Don't, don't, don't be in a prison. Don't take the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And look how shaitan looks. How many of us have we heard this? Brother, how do you want me to pray and I have a girlfriend? True. Brother, how do you want me to pray? And I go clubbing and I drink alcohol. See, you see how Shaitan works? Brother, explain something to me. Me drinking alcohol is hard on this one. So that's one wrong. How does me not praying make that right? How do two wrongs make a right? You drinking alcohol is one haram. But you not praying, Habibi, that's a whole new world. Nah, brother, you know, I heard that that's a sign of hypocrisy. No, that's not hypocrisy. And this burns me, you know. Some of the boys, they'll come to a drug dealer that does haram, right? Yeah, he sells drugs, he does haram, but he prays. So what do the boys do? Thinking it's wisdom. They pick on the only good thing he does. Brother, you're a hypocrite, man. Why? You do this and you do this, you do that and you pray. So what does the brother end up doing? What does the brother end up doing? Yeah, of course, he ends up leaving his salah. I think, wallah, brothers, thank you. Zatullah khairah. The only good that was in his life, you turned him away from it. You want to go clubbing, akhi? Do you want to go clubbing? Go. But this is, this is my advice. Pray, Aisha, and then leave. You know, what's funny? My brothers, you and I laugh. We turn people off salah. Why? Because you think that deen is according to what's in your mind. Brother, two wrongs don't make a right. You pray no matter what. Your prayer is between you and Allah and no man can stand between it. Pray. I don't care what it is. Pray. Pray. No matter what happens. Are we ready for that, inshallah? Who's ready to make a change, man? Really, genuine, genuine. Not, not, not just talking lip service. Who's ready to make a move, bro? Start helping his community. Start helping these kids. Helping yourselves. Brother Ramadan is around the corner. How many of these brothers, they've missed Ramadan now? How many of them?